Got us a sunny day today. We're at Forest Lawn Memorial Park, Glendale, California. Going to start out inside the Freedom Mausoleum in this video. Have you heard of Cobb Salad? This fella invented it. He owned the Brown Derby downtown Hollywood. Cobb Salad. And how about Mr. Kelly? Kelly Blue Book. Well, let's go ahead and get started. We're on the lower level of the Freedom Mausoleum here in Glendale, California. Our first stop today is the grave location of May Hogan Camburn. She was an accomplished harpist who was the first woman to play in the Los Angeles Philharmonic Orchestra. Over the course of her career, she performs as a harpist for George Gershwin and Mary Pickford and others. She also performs in movie soundtracks for Roy Rogers, and a lot of the Walt Disney programs, you watch the harp in the background. That, that would be May Hogan Camburn. I couldn't find her pictures online, but you can find her music on YouTube. Worth a listen. If you come to the bottom of the stairs, if you look for the stained glass, if you get into the, if you catch the uh, grave hunting disease like I have, these would be hens. Now we're at the grave location of Billy Dove. She was a young fashion model and she appeared in Ziegfeld Follies at age 14. And then at age 19, she appears in her first film, Polly of the Follies, after she moves to Hollywood. This is in 1922. Many of her film credits are The Lone Star Ranger, a 1923 film. The Air Mail came out in 1925. Her Private Life, a 1929 film. She decides to retire early, young, when she marries a rich oil tycoon. Back upstairs, just around the corner, we'll walk up on the uh, resting place of Mary Wells. Mary was a singer-songwriter active from 1960 through 1990. She becomes ill in 1990 with throat cancer, ends up dying in 92 with hardly any money left. She had a uh, shoddy weak contract with Motown got cheated out of many royalties sadly she had hit songs with the one who really loves you and the Grammy nominated song you beat me to the punch her biggest hit was my guy a 1964 song she was called a queen of Motown love her music you can find her on YouTube Give her a listen. I just remembered if you come over to this area where it says Columbarium of Blessedness. I remember from a previous video I did here. Uh, right here next to Mary Wells is the gravesite. Uh, Billy Barty, a three foot nine actor. He appeared in many, many movies including, well the first time I saw him was an Elvis Presley movie. He also is the founder of Little People of America. Just had to come over and pay my respects. Time flies. 
sun rises, shadows fall, let time go by, love is forever, overall. Ralph and Barbara Edwards. Here we have Barbara Edwards, the wife of Ralph Edwards. This is your life, Ralph Edwards. Who could forget This Is Your Life show? This aired on NBC from 1952 until 1961. This was Ralph's baby. He created it, produced, and hosted the show. Many celebrities would be surprised on live TV. They thought they were showing up for uh, something else to, or, you know, to do a commercial or an interview. And in walks Ralph Edwards with This Is Your Life book that he had read out of. He did such shows with Marilyn Monroe, Laurel Hardy, Bob Hope, Andy Griffith, Buster Keaton, and many others. I still like watching it in the reruns. I believe Ted Knight is out this direction, so let's go see if we can find him. Yes, here he is, Ted Knight of the Mary Tyler Moore Show. It's the first time I heard of him. He's also in the television series Too Close for Comfort. He plays a part of Judge Smells in the movie Caddyshack. That's a really good movie. If you watch the, the movie Psycho, uh, towards the end of the movie, he plays a police officer guarding the room where Norman Bates was in custody. And again, this is at the end of the movie. A little known fact. He joins the army and volunteers to go to the front line battlefield where he wins five battle stars. Bye guy. <laughs> okay, let's keep moving. Coming up on a grave location of Kathy O'Donnell. Her first acting experience was in the best years of our lives. A great, great movie. I highly recommend it. The director of that movie was William Wyler. He's right here. And Kathy meets William's brother on the set. And she ends up marrying Robert Wyler. He's 23, 23 years older. And she is. Our next stop is a sad story. You probably heard of the uh, Onion Field killings, the abduction of the police officers from downtown Hollywood. And they took them out to the Onion Field, and they end up uh, shooting and killing Ian Campbell. This is in 1963. If you get a chance to read the book or watch the movie, it's Ted Danson's uh, first acting appearance. He plays a part of Ian Campbell. And I have the story on my channel right here if you want to check it out. I actually went out to the Onion Field location, and I started out where they were abducted at in Hollywood. Sad story. His dad was a medical doctor. And his mother, Chrissy, lived, lived to age 93. Carl William Demarest. You might not recognize his name, but you'll recognize his face. He's best known for playing Uncle Charlie in My Three Sons. 
I first noticed him in the movie, the Elvis movie, Viva Las Vegas, that came out in 1964. Demarest loved to stay busy. He was in 140 films from 1926 through the late 70s. He died right after Christmas in his Palm Springs home on December 28th, 1983. Our Getting my exercise today, came down that hill, climbed up this one, got up to the top. I was looking for a particular grave. I thought I'd walk straight to these flags, and sure enough, this is exactly who I'm looking for. Jimmy Stewart. Uh, please excuse my shadow. James Stewart. Jimmy Stewart had an amazing life. Did you know he was a Brigadier General in the Air Force? Jimmy appears in 80 films from 1935 through 1991. His breakout film was You Can't Take It With You, and this is a 1938 film. He wins an Academy Award in the Philadelphia Story, which came out in 1940. And who could forget his role as George Bailey in It's a Wonderful Life? Seems like that's on every Christmas season. Stewart was a bachelor until his 40s. The press called him the Great American Bachelor. But he does end up getting married. He marries model Gloria McLean in 1949. They remain married until, his de until her death in 1994. Uh, Jimmy dies three years later. We were just at the grave of an American hero. Now we're coming up upon a baseball hero. Charles Dillon Stingle, Casey Stingle. He would often say, there comes a time in every man's life, and I've had plenty of them. He lived right here in Glendale, California, and during the off season, he would work at a local bank. He played right field in the major leagues, but he's best known for being the manager of the Yankees and then later the New York Mets. He's in Baseball Hall of Fame. Legendary baseball man, Casey Stingle. Well, that's going to wrap this one up. Thanks for dropping in. Everybody needs to be remembered. <laughs>